Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about the bullet effect, uh, commonly referred to as the Forrester effect. And it's called the Forrester effect because it originated from Jay Forrester, and he wrote a book in 1961 called Industrial Dynamics, and he was basically trying to explain, um, and he did a very good job of it, uh, to account for the unforeseen spikes in demand within a supply chain and why um, these unforeseen spikes in demand within a supply chain have a reverberating effect throughout the entire supply chain to the extent where every member of the supply chain ramps up their inventory counts to account for the demand that they've suddenly been, been uh, come face to face with, this sudden increase in demand. So everyone ramps up their inventory counts and then all of a sudden the next week or the next month the demand is not there anymore. Okay, So this is basically a, a very simple and straightforward process to understand. And the reason why I'm doing it today is because a lot of companies are either unaware of it or choose to ignore it or don't think it has that much of an impact. But most importantly, I'm doing it, this, this video today because there are five signs that you can look for in order to make sure that the, the, bull, of, the bull of effect is not going to impact your inventory or at least give you some um, insight into what to look for in order to make sure that you're protected against these unforeseen spikes in demand. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this from the mindset of a consumer um, supply chain model, a consumer market. Okay, we're going to go from the retailer to the wholesaler to the distributor, all the way to the manufacturer, and then from the manufacturer out to their own uh, vendors when they purchase raw materials and stuff. Okay, so we're going to start with writing down those portions of the supply chain. So we got the retailer. Okay, and then you got the wholesaler. And then you've got the distributor, and then you've got the manufacturer. Okay, Let's put the circle around these guys: one, two, three, and four. Now, essentially, what the bullwhip effect states is that every member of the supply chain re relies upon the other. Okay, the manufacturer relies upon the feedback in terms of forecasts from the distributor. The distributor relies upon the wholesale. The wholesaler relies upon the retailer. So essentially, one day you have this consumer or a series of consumers that come in, and this, these consumers come in, and they all of a sudden place this huge order. And they essentially liquidate, completely liquidate the retailer's inventory. Okay? So they come in, let's say they're buying beer. Right? And a whole group of people come in within a period of about, let's say, a month, and they liquidate the retailer's entire inventory. So the inventory um, before was, let's say, let's say the inventory was, you know, 500 cases of beer, and at the end of the month, it's down to zero. Now, typically, the retailer sells a certain volume every two months, okay? And all of a sudden, they've sold this two-month volume all in one month. And so their anticipation is, wow, we, we just sold 500 cases of beer. We're going to be selling that every single month moving forward. So instead of using 500 cases of beer every two months, I'm going to need 500 cases of beer every month. So the retailer sends an order over to the wholesaler for 1,000 cases. Okay? Because what they want is they want to replenish their inventory to account for this new demand that they've seen. So the wholesaler gets this order. Now the wholesaler says, wow, that's phenomenal. This is much higher than we typically see. We only usually uh, you know, see 1,000 from uh, you know, two uh, retailers. So now we're going to have to place a larger order. And they place a larger order of 1,500 cases of beer to the distributor. Now the distributor sees that, and they think, oh my god, this is fantastic. This is great. Huge demand. Now we're going to have to buy more from the manufacturer. So they go over to the manufacturer and they place an order for 2,000. Now the manufacturer turns around and says, this is phenomenal, this is fantastic, increased demand. We're going to have to buy even more raw materials. So they place an even larger order for raw materials in order to match this demand. Okay? Now what happens is, this all looks fantastic, it looks great. All of a sudden there's this increased demand, it's phenomenal, it's going to continue. The next month, as I said, the, the consumers come in, and their, their order of volume is 250. And it puts all of this out the window. It's completely out of whack. Everybody's inventory is higher. 
than it was before. But when the wholesaler calls the retailer, the retailer says, no, 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 I'm fine, I've got plenty of inventory. When the distributor calls the wholesaler, the wholesaler is going to say, no, no, I'm fine, I've got plenty of inventory. When the manufacturer calls the distributor, the distributor is going to say, I've got plenty of inventory, I don't need any more. And when the, the, the manufacturer's vendors call them, the manufacturer is going to say, no, 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 we built up all this inventory, we're fine, we don't need any more raw materials or what have you. Okay? And this is why it's called the bulwark effect. And it's literally this. Okay? It's this process where a single and sudden change in demand has a reverberating effect across the entire supply chain. Now, what do you need to do as a company in order to make sure that you're aware of these type of situations and can be a little bit more proactive? Well, one of the things I want you to be pay attention to is seasonality. Okay? So I'm going to put right here, seasonality. Now, what I mean by that is that in some consumer markets, um, you know, there's, there are certain times a year where, um, you know, demand suddenly spikes. In terms of beer, Super Bowl, you, you know, <laughs> Super Bowl every Super Bowl Sunday, beer suddenly spikes, or Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, these type of things. So be aware of seasonality, okay? In other markets, it's a concern of business cycles, okay? You know, it's common for some companies to have some quarters that are busier than others. So do you understand which quarters you're going to be busier than others, okay? A third thing you want to understand is new product introductions. Now, one of the things that happens is we live in this digital marketing age where things can catch on very quickly and products can become suddenly extremely popular. And a lot of times companies launch a product not understanding just how popular the product can, can become because they haven't, they, they can't possibly see it. And suddenly that product takes off and this is what happens. And there's a sudden mad rush to go out and buy a new product, but then that demand tapers off. You look at you know, throughout history, um, in terms of consumer introductions with products like you know, Sony's PlayStation and these type of things, it's a mad rush to buy it, and then it tapers off, okay? So that's, that's another example. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the end of life of a product. End of life, okay? Um, all of a sudden, uh, you know, a company says, we're not going to make this product anymore. Uh, we're, we're just, we're just going to stop making it. And there's a mad rush to go out and get what's left because there's people that are nostalgic and they like the product and they've always anticipated uh, that this would happen. But, but the moment they hear that the, the company is going to stop making the product, they suddenly rush out and they just basically go up and they, they, they get as many of that product as they possibly can. Okay? So that's the fourth one. And the fifth one, I would have to say, is unforeseen. There are some circumstances where you, know, you just can't account for this sudden and drastic increase in demand. So that's it. The bullwhip forester effect. Make sure you pay attention to these five warning signs. Make sure you understand the supply chain and where you fit in the supply chain. And make sure you understand exactly how these sudden and unforeseen spikes in demands um, can really impact your supply chain. And, and, and pay attention to these five areas here because a lot of times this bullet effect, this, this reverberating effect throughout the supply, uh, entire supply chain comes from, you know, one of these five areas, okay? And if you're, if you're cognizant of these five areas, you'll be better prepared to handle this type of situation. So that's it, the bullet forester effect. Please uh, subscribe to my blog uh, and, and to my YouTube channel. That's it, Ian Johnson, DriveSuccess.com. Bye-bye.